Hey everybody, John Reap here. You're about to watch and or listen to episode 36 of Country-ish. And we have a fabulous show for you today. We play another edition of Member Me. That's when I call up people from my high school yearbook. Also, I give you a popsicle update. We do a meme. We play a Jeff Foxworthy game. And my buddy Kyle Davis joins the show. Let me get it. Get the country, boy. And he's making it good. He was Charles underdog, dressed in beer rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of his green. And headed for Southern Cal Wound up in TV and film Making popsicle proud Now this country boy Is back with his family Got himself a podcast He knows it'll last Cause he's in Hickory that's right. I am in Hickory, and I'm very happy about it. I hope you're happy, no matter where you are. Happy, healthy, safe, and sound. That's my new thing. Two H's, two S's. Happy, happy, healthy, safe, and sound. I'm John Reap. You're listening to another amazing episode of Country-ish, and uh, I'm joined by a very good friend of mine, a staple on the show. Let me just get right to him. He is probably comes in around 10 feet, 3 inches <laughs> tall. I mean, like I said before, we've dug a hole. He's standing in it. Um, he's the southeastern man of mystery. I'm talking about the one, the only, Sebastian. How are you? Fantastic. Good to have you. Fantastic. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir. Uh, I like the hat. I like the shirt. Thank you. Um, we're going to get right to it because we got people on hold. Oh, let's talk to them. We, we got people on hold and uh, got a great show lined up for you today, so – Bear with me. Remember me, reading the reading out of my yearbook. We've got an interview with Kyle Davis. I'm going to give you a popsicle update. And we're taking phone calls. And there's a, a game that we're going to play with uh, Jeff Foxworthy's game that we're going to play. And we might get to a small town news story, crazy thing out of Florida, a shocker. Yep. But let's not keep these people holding any longer. But wait, Alan. Yes. Do I need to read something out of this first, or should we just take the calls first? I feel like I need to read. Why don't you go ahead and read one? Yeah. read one out of there first. Yeah. So for those of you who may uh, be new to the podcast, this is a segment called "Remember Me." Uh, what I do is I pull out my old uh, high school yearbook. This happens to be my senior yearbook, and you know how people write in your yearbook, and they they leave phone numbers sometimes, and they say things like, "Call me sometime, friends forever." Keep in touch. Call me anytime. Use this sometime. Well, that's what we're doing. Now is the time. I'm a man of my word. Sure, it's 30 years later. 30 years later, you're still. But we're going to do it. We're going to call up. I got a lot of people in here. You got um, a lot of numbers in there. I'm just looking at them. I didn't get that many numbers in my yearbook. Do you have your yearbook? I do. Let's read this one. Uh, John. Oh my God. I did not pre read this. <laughs> and I, these are not my words. You got to read, you gotta read exactly like it's straight. John, yo, honky dude, what's shaking? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're leaving our humble home so soon. I wouldn't think that you would want to. Well, dude, I'll miss you. Have a great summer and come back and visit. Don't do anything I would. Peace, love, and happiness. Keep in touch, Kim Hunter. I don't really remember her. I got to see a picture. Um, I, apparently, I was friends with her. She's cool. She's got a little. Sounds like a hippie chick in a weird way because she has a. She put a little peace sign next to her. Mm-hmm. You know Kim Hunter? No. no. Very familiar name. I'm sure I'd recognize her if I saw her. <laughs> but you know that's the, what the problem is, Alan. Is it's been too long. Yeah. And she told me to keep in touch. And uh, I think now's the time. Yeah. Let's call up. I'll better, do the, better late than never. Better late than never. I'm going to do my old area code, <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Put it on speakerphone. Here we go. 
Can you hear that okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Kim? Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice. Oh, message. should I leave a message? 7042940543. Is not available. I'll leave a message. At the tone, please record your message. Okay. When you have finished recording, do do then? you may hang up I may? or press 1 for more I could, options. Oh, I could hit more options if I chose to hit more options. <laughs> I could. Oh, hey! Uh, <laughs> Kim Hunter, John Reap here. Uh, just going through my yearbook, I saw that you left a message and a phone number, and you told me to keep in touch. So I'm keeping in touch. Call me back. <laughs> All right. Now let's try the different area code just in case. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's the bummer about this area is because I think we did that one time with uh, Stamos and it actually worked when we switched area codes. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we had an area code, area code change a long time ago. Let's see what happens. The mailbox is full. Oh, and it's there is not full. Space to leave a message. Kim, you. popular no matter what area code. <laughs> it's busy or popular. <laughs> All right, so we're doing member me on the phone. That's I'm hoping people call in with their yearbook, and uh, I'll cold call somebody, see what happens. <laughs> who do we, we got on the phone? Bring our first person in? Yeah, who do we got? I, I don't know. We'll find out. So here they are. Uh, we're bringing them in. First caller, you're coming in. Hello. Hello. Hey, how you doing, John? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, buddy. <laughs> doing good, man. Oh, great. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Uh, this is all eight foot, 11 inches tall, Rick Sanford III from Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. Rick Sanford III. We, oh, we've read your emails. Uh, you've sent me uh, all kinds of, uh, well, we got a picture one time in the yeah. email. So I remember you, buddy. How you doing? Doing fantastic. How about y'all? We're hey, we're doing great, man. Uh, we're doing a segment where we call up people from my yearbook, and um, you know you have to ask for permission sometimes. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know how long you've been holding, Rick. But anyway, do you happen to have your yearbook nearby? I have it right in front of me. Oh, this is great. Now, Rick, for those of you who don't know, I mean for people listen to this who don't know you like me and sebastian know you um what year did you graduate 1988 oh, okay mm. so you're only two years behind me or ahead of me mm-hmm. um now did you uh, did you graduate uh in virginia where's this yearbook from what state yes prince george county virginia oh great now alan i don't know how we're going to do this how do i get these numbers from Rick. I mean, you can bleep this out later, right? I mean, I don't want everybody getting the numbers I'm about to call up. <laughs> right. So maybe there's a way. <laughs> I love the, the way that you're looking at me and the way you He's just like, said, right? I just, have a camera on myself. So he says yeah, everything. this is the look I'm giving you right now. He just calls him an hour he extra goes, work. Right. I mean, no, it, it, it's we can bleep out all the numbers. Yeah, that's not a problem. That's all it's I'm just, care to care Just care know about. that the other... Two callers on hold, and our Patreon viewers are going to get it. But, you know, there's nothing That's to do fine. about that. Well, they're, they're cool. They're going to be fine. I don't count that as a broadcast. All right. I don't think. Rick, are you cool? <laughs> hey, do you have one picked out with a phone number? You want to read it to us and uh, give me the number, and I'll call it up? Actually, if you got your email open, I just sent it to you. Oh, here we go. So he Ooh. didn't have. Yeah. Using technology. That's yeah. A, that's good. Let me check my email. Man, he's good. Here it is. I got it right here. Oh, okay. Man. So, uh, Rick, how about you read what this person wrote and give me the name, and I'll call him up. All right. This is from Beth. She said, Rick, you are a real great guy. I wish you all the luck for your future. Thank you for looking after me on the school trip. It was a blast. Never forget all the good times there. Hope to see you in the future. Keep in touch over all the years, love Beth. Oh, okay. This is great. That's a sounds exactly like something I would <laughs> have read out of my yearbook. Yep. Very generic. Very generic. Very like you know. Everyone says it. Keep in touch. Yeah. Don't be a stranger. I'm gonna call this number. Beth, do you hear me calling? <laughs> Beth. <laughs> That's what's about to yeah. happen. Hey Rick, was she was she cute? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. long pause okay yeah. um now would she be about does she graduate the same year as you give me something that would help her yeah. you know help us with a phone call like did she 
cheer? Was she a cheerleader? Did she play volleyball? Uh, no, we went on a school trip to Disneyland or Disney World the spring of 1988. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I got it. I'll just use that. Our, our <laughs> okay. senior our senior trip. Senior, senior trip. trip. What's the name of the high school? Prince George High School. Prince George High School, Rick. Disney World senior trip. Okay. Here we go. Now, will she be able to hear Rick Allen? I uh, know. Oh, so she, Rick, unfortunately, she won't be able to hear you, but you can hear my conversation with her. Is that okay? All right, then. Rick, do I have your permission <laughs> to call Beth? Yeah, knock yourself out. This will be, this will be fun and interesting. <laughs> Whew, I'm nervous. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see what happens. George. George oh! The number you dialed is not in service. Oh, we'll see. That's that's part of the game. <laughs> I mean, what are the odds that? That is a very common tale. Yeah, thirty-two years later, that'd be the exact same number. So anyway, we tried Rick Sanford the third. God bless you. Uh, this guy, I mean, we've talked about him before. He's yep. the third. He's the third from <laughs> yeah, Richmond. I think he said he's the last. The third and the last. <laughs> Is that right, Rick? I am the last because the third time is the charm. Boom! Yes. All right, Rick. Thanks for playing, dude. We're going to take another phone call. You be well, buddy. All right, y'all take care now. You too. <laughs> All right. Who we got Rick next, Alan? All right, coming up next, here's somebody else in the queue. Hello, John Reap talking. Who's this? Uh, Try again? Let's go. Hey, this is John Reap. You're on Country Ish Podcast. Who do, who 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 am I talking to? And, hey, what's up? Oh, hey, who's this? It's Andy Rice. Andy Rice. I know this guy. He's a very tall dude too. Oh, competition. How tall are you, Andy? Oh, big lop of five foot eleven. <laughs> Oh, you're taller than that. Yeah, I got you, Andy. Uh, dude. Anyway, thanks for calling, right. Andy. Um, I think Andy was uh, here for the Hickory Live uh, taping. Am I right? Yes, sir, I was. Me, my brother, and my dad. That's right. We went to the Silver Bullet. Oh. Andy, you experienced the oh, yeah, Silver remember, Bullet. He met Mr. Uh, Sebastian Schoen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we had a good time, man. I mean, look. That's how big this podcast is. People come from all over the country to hang out with us and go to the Silver <laughs> Bullet. Thank you, Andy. Uh, how you been, buddy? Let, let me ask you that. How you been? How is everything? Pretty good. Um, I'm in school right now for computer drafting, and uh, I just got a new apartment. <laughs> oh, that's great. How's your brother and your dad? Pretty good. Very good. Well, this segment's all about calling up people from the yearbook. You don't happen to have your yearbook nearby, do you? I See, here's the thing. I don't want to insult nobody, but when we did yearbooks, you know, this is about 10 years ago, nobody wrote phone numbers in there because everybody was like, we got Facebook. Oh, <laughs> he's, oh, he's young. so young for that. That's what, right. What year graduated? We are so yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wait, Andy, what, what what year did you graduate high school? 2010. Oh, my oh, God. That's right. I forgot how young he was. <laughs> get, go get your brother's yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look. Oh, man, I would uh... – I appreciate you checking in. I appreciate you watching and listening and all that stuff. Uh, we got other people on hold. Let's try and get them in here and uh, and see if we can get a yearbook. Thanks, Andy. You take care, buddy. All right. You guys have a good day. You too. Bye, Shekel. All right, Alan. Let's okay. keep moving. Next up. Here we go. I mean, think about it. All righty right. then. Right you are live on the Country Ish podcast. Who am I talking to? This is uh, Shane Flint. Shane Flint. Hey, one of our Patreons. Yeah. What's yep. up, buddy? Are you watching and listening at the same time? <laughs> I'm not watching. I'm, uh, I'm listening. Very good. Um, and uh, thanks for taking my call. Hey, thank you for calling and being a Patreon uh, supporter. We appreciate it. Now, this segment happens to be about yearbooks. It's called Member Me. 
Uh, I've already called up somebody from my yearbook. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. And uh, I'm hoping you got your yearbook nearby, Shane. I do. All right. Okay. Now tell me what state you're calling from. I'm calling from Virginia, Stafford, Virginia. Well, that's two for Stafford, Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. State Rick for Rick, Lovers. Dude, yeah. Rick Sanford, the third. Now we got a guy from Stafford, Virginia. Yes. That's a crazy world we're living in, Sebastian. I know. Okay. Um, how about you read us the entry, and then when you're done with that, we'll get the name and number, and I'll call him up, and I'll ask a question on your behalf, or I'll just make up something. How's that sound? Sounds like a plan. Okay. You got so, the floor. So uh, I'll go ahead and read it. This is from Erin. She says, Shane, so glad to see that you're out of the hospital. I had appendicitis my senior year mm. and that you're feeling better. I'm definitely going to miss you, but won't forget you. Please, please stay in touch. <laughs> you have a piece of my heart. Erin. Uh, okay. Well, listen, you don't want to not be a man of your word. I mean, she's begging you to stay in touch, right? Please, twice. And she yeah. took a piece of his heart that he probably needs it back. And his appendix. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you had appendicitis? Uh, my appendix ruptured two months before um, I graduated high school in 1990. Oh, man. I've n I mean. Missed my senior trip and all that, you know, fun stuff. What year did you graduate again? 1990. Same year as you. Oh, shit. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, what's her name? I'm sorry. I don't Aaron. Know. Aaron, okay. Aaron. Aaron. And, okay, so uh, Shane calling Aaron. She said, please <laughs> call me, and I, I want to, you know, I want to give her an update on my append my appendix. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you get it removed, or what happened? Well, it was removed because it exploded. So, it, it actually, I was in the hospital for a month. Oh, my God. What do they do when you... What happens? I mean, do we need it? No. Don't people get that removed all the time? Yep. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're doing okay. Um, yeah, I didn't get there in time. He didn't get there. He had to get the pieces off. He had to find all the pieces in his guts. Oh, man. Did you get yours removed? No. You still got your? I think I still got mine. Yeah, I'm trying to take everything I can with me. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Alan, get ready to bleepy bloopity, I guess. And uh, whenever you're ready, uh, Shane, just give me the number. It's... Shane, give me the last four digits one more time. Okay, got you. All right, sorry, Alan. I know this is going to be a lot of bleeping on your part. Sorry, right, we'll I want to double check. Got it. <laughs> We've said the number <laughs> like a thousand times. Alan's head's exploding. Uh, no. Hey, <laughs> Shane. <laughs> Okay. So his appendix is Alan's appendix is exploded yeah. back here. <laughs> Al, yeah. All right. So <laughs> let's call up Aaron. Okay. Oh, oh it's, it's busy. busy. Oh, wait, Shane, that did you give her a heads a, up or something? It has to be a landline. Maybe she's talking to somebody else. Let's see here. Um, who has a busy signal anymore? I didn't know busy signals even existed. Yeah, that's, that's unusual. Yeah, so that that tells me it's probably a landline. Should be. Hmm. Let's try it again. Let's go right in a row. Still busy. Oh, hmm. Shane. Now, what part of Virginia is this? Well, I'm gonna have to dial that number later. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dialing it right now? <laughs> no. No. Blocking the. <laughs> <laughs> what part of Virginia is this? It's uh, I'm 50 miles south of Washington D.C. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna go one more time. Uh, I don't like busy signals. Dang it! All right, Shane, I don't know what to do. Um, we'll try it again later. Yeah. We'll look. You know, a busy signal is not a no. No, it's a maybe. Mm -hmm. So don't worry, Shane. We'll try it again oh, sometime. Maybe better than a no. That's right. We'll take a maybe. Do we have anybody else on hold, Alan? One more. One more person. Shane, we got to take one more call. I appreciate you trying this, 
And thank you for being a Patreon uh, su supporter, and thanks for calling in. We love you, Shane. Yeah, take care, John. You too, buddy. Bicycle. All right. Alan, let's All do right. one more, huh? Here we go. One more. Okay. And they're on. All right. You are on the Country-ish podcast with me, John Reap. Who am I talking to? This is Carmen. Uh, I went to Fred P. Ford from 2003 to 2007. So she was at Fred. Carmen? Yes. Okay. So you went to Ford 2000. Now, did they put phone numbers in the yearbook in 2000? Um, Say. <laughs> Can you hear me, Carmen? <laughs> Is she still there? Mm -hmm. Carmen, hello. Yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm just. Here. Yes. Uh, did they write, like in your yearbook, did someone leave a phone number? No. Okay. I just uh, have your autograph from the uh, lunch line. Uh, you came into our school to do a stand-up show. Oh, wow. So you wrote, um, hey, Carmen, enjoy the hot dog, John Reap. <laughs> enjoy the hot dog? So where was know? this? Yes. Where was the hot um, dog? In the lunch line at school. You, did you have to oh, go through the lunch it was, line? Um, what I was having for lunch. <laughs> I got it. I, I know exactly what she's talking about. Okay. So after I won last comic standing, yeah. which is season five, two thousand seven, that yeah. was be your senior year, right, Carmen? Yes. And so I went there because Randy Bell, my old art teacher, asked me to come speak to his senior, his seniors in his art class. That's how it started. And I said. Yeah, sure. Only if I'm allowed to go to the cafeteria <laughs> because I want to eat that food, the school food again because yeah. I hadn't had it. And I'm like, dude, you can't get that crap anywhere else but at a freaking uh, public school. Yeah. I mean, the, the weird pizzas yeah, and all I that stuff. Yeah, I love the pizza. So I was actually looking forward to eating in the cafeteria and, of course, just speaking to his art class, seniors only. That slowly turned into... Oh, so now can you do my juniors and my seniors? I'm like, uh, yeah. So now can you do the whole? Can you do the whole school? Can you do the entire in the gym in front of everybody? It wasn't even going to be a stand up show. It was going to be more about like you know, never give up. Yeah, chase motivational your speaking. <laughs> and it turned into like Is this. What turned into the shopping cart dance and all these different things? Oh, this was way else? after the that shopping after. cart. Yeah, okay. I came in there with my high school jersey, football jersey, my letter jacket. And uh, I think I had a Goodyear hat on. And um, that's when Lance – oh, God, Lance – what was uh, – Watson? Lance Watson, yep, was uh, was still there. You had uh, – anyway, so I went up there, and I, and I just talked to, to them. And it turned into, like, you know, that's half the school in the gymnasium. Yeah. Uh, and afterwards, uh, I guess maybe in the lunch line, I, I ran into Carmen here. And what did I sign? What was the actual thing I signed? Uh, a piece of notebook paper. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm pretty sure you were behind me in the launch line or in front of me. I can't remember that part. Mm. Well, I'm glad you called it. Do you listen to my podcast? It's okay. You can... uh, sometimes, yes, I do. I follow you on Facebook. Right. See, what I'm trying to do, Carmen, is get all these people I got on Facebook uh -huh. to listen to my podcast. So that's that's one of the ways I'm trying to get people to listen is like, you know, getting them to call in or doing contests and yeah. play games with us. Um, but, you know, hey, go Tigers. Especially if you don't, if you're a Ford girl and you don't <laughs> listen to the podcast, don't they take your stripes for that? Mm -hmm. Take your Tiger stripes? <laughs> that's right. No, you have to, no. You have to give them they back, Carmen. I years ago. Okay. Well, um, yeah, so do you have a yearbook nearby that we could even read something from it? Or, uh, uh, yeah, it's weird. I guess at that age, like what Andy was saying, yeah. because of Facebook and everything else, no There's one no would phone, leave they don't numbers. Worry about phone numbers. It's anymore. like email me, yeah. you know. Messenger. <laughs> Message me, yeah. Do you have a yearbook, Carmen? I do. Um, let's see. Do you have it nearby? Yeah, I do. I just grabbed it off the shelf. Um, 
So you're wanting phone numbers? <laughs> no, wait. Let's correct you. I don't want phone no. numbers. Uh, what I was no. doing was on your behalf, if someone had... Okay, so this segment that uh, we're doing is called Member Me, as in Remember Me. And what I do is I read old... Yeah. I read what people wrote in my yearbook, and if they left a phone number... I call them 30 years later, and I go, hey, remember me? Um, and so I thought, like, I'll have the listeners call in, and I'll read from their yearbook and see if they remember you. But, of course, you probably don't have any phone numbers in there because of Facebook. Well, you speak for yourself on the phone numbers. So yeah, I I'll don't take all phone numbers. any phone numbers in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Well, did they leave an email? <laughs> Yeah, I don't see any phone numbers in here at all. Well, that's fine. Well, look. Sorry. It's okay. No, no. <laughs> um, I'm happy to have uh, signed your piece of notebook paper, and I hope you enjoyed your hot dog that day. <laughs> and uh, I, cert I certainly enjoyed my pizza. <laughs> and I appreciate you calling in. And uh, please go subscribe and listen. Watch my podcast that you're on right now. Comes out Friday, country-ish. Okie dokie. All right. Sounds good. All right, Carmen. You take care now. You too. Bye, Thank you, John. Bye bye. All right, Alan, is there anybody else left in there? Uh, there is one more. If you got time for one more, or do you want to? We got time for one more. One? And if you want, Alan, I can call somebody else from my yearbook. We could try another it's one. Your call, man. We got one more that can uh, hop in if you want to take one more call. Let's do one more and All then right. we'll see how it goes. All right, here oh. we go. One more call. Okay. And they're in. All right. Thanks for calling in to the Country Ish podcast. You're on with me, John Reap. Who's this? This is Ben from Georgia. Ben from Georgia. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. I, uh, I'm BTH75. I gave you a comment last week from the Georgia Pines and uh, also on your Heffern and Reap show, which is, I don't know. They're both pretty good, if you ask me. Well, I appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much. This segment that we're doing right now is called Member Me, and we call up people from the yearbook if there's a phone number in there. Um, when did you graduate high school? Do you have a yearbook, and is there a phone number in there? And do you want me to call it? Uh, 94, and I have no idea where it's at at the moment. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Well, I would imagine 94, there'd still be some phone numbers yep. up in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah there, so there might be a couple. Are you at home near your yearbook? <laughs> Should we wait on it? <laughs> no, I think <laughs> Ben. I, you... It's in the basement somewhere, John. I, I, I'd have to dig for it. It's all good, buddy. I'm glad you called in here. Um, we we have called people from my yearbook. Um, some people, you know, the thing is, you got to ask for permission. Um, otherwise, you can't air it. So. Sometimes they get cut out of the show. Sometimes they don't. But uh, no. I've got another one, Alan, that I could try. We could do it with Ben on hold, with on the phone with me. Yeah, because I think we just lost Ben. Did Ben just hang up? I think Ben's gone. Ben, are you still there? Oh, no. No, it said it, it said his call's gone. So. Ben there done that. Oh, hold on. He just Wait. called back in. He just called back in. Let's let's bring him back in. We'll bring quick. Ben back on. Yeah, and I got another one I can read. Ben, Ben's back. Hey, Ben, I lost you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm in the backyard getting ready to spray for bugs. You know how those are here in the south, so. That's right. You, fr you spraying for skeeters? Skeeters? Oh, everything. All of them. <laughs> um, well, what I've decided to do is uh, I will read you one of my. Uh... He's gone again. Okay, well, He's mosquito must have took his phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look, we tried. That's how you play. Remember me? me? we got to get a theme song for that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, the phone banks are now uh, closed, and we can move on. I wanted to catch up with you. Normally, we catch up at the top of the show. Oh, I know. Two callers. Um, we're, we're very popular as well. We're everywhere, by the way. Uh, we're on uh, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, you name it. Wherever there's a podcast, there is country-ish. And we need your help. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. Um, one of the things I like doing is, well, number one, we have a Patreon uh, support page. If you want to support the podcast, you can do that. 
Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support. There are many different levels that you can help us out and you get rewards like this model I have right in front of me with this countryish hat and a countryish shirt. These things could be yours. I'm wearing, I have around my neck a ginger beard mask, which is also part of the deal. Let me put a smile on your face. More specifically, my smile. (laughs) And uh, yeah, you could help the podcast. Okay. Now, if you don't have any money, which is fine. That's probably 90% of our listeners. And you still want to help out the podcast. You can simply go to Apple podcast, give us a five star rating and write a review. And if you write a review, I will read it on the podcast. And we have some new ones that I'd like to read for you right now. Um, This one is by Ryan Landers, 1274 gives us five stars Hmm. says John reap the neighbor next door. John really makes you feel like you're listening to your favorite next-door neighbor. Such a refreshing feel in a podcast these days. Really invites you into his life of comedy and beloved hickory. Oh, that's very pleasant. Thank you, Ryan Landers. Here's another one by Cody R. Pitts. Five stars, great podcast, funny, laid back, and makes you feel like you are in the group. You are, Cody. Love the podcast, man. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Cody. Here's one more. By Who Knows 09. Says a relief gives us five stars. I found this podcast because of your appearance on Burt Kreischer's podcast. Yes. <clears throat> I've been I've been tuned in ever since. Be well, Popsicle. Look at that. Gives us a little popsicle love. Well, thank you all for doing that. Again, that helps us if uh if you want to help us out. That uh puts our numbers up and we're growing slowly. We need your love. All righty then. I don't know where to start. So many things just to randomly catch up on. Okay. Um, you know, I've been trolling country living on Twitter. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're still doing this. Uh, well, they've behaved themselves for a while. They went dormant on me. Okay. Maybe but they But recently, were. I could not resist their post. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know what this is, on Twitter, the magazine called Country Living, right, has a Twitter page. It's at Country Living. I follow them because my podcast is called Country Ish, and I live in Hickory. I think I qualify as a Country Living subscriber or follower or whatever it is. <laughs> You're but, in the demo. Yeah, exactly. I'm in the demo. Yep. But just like CMT got bought out by Viacom, which is VH1 and MTV, mm. Country Living's not. They're more Country Ish than I am. So I troll them when they decide to tweet things that have nothing to do with Living in the Country, which is the title of their magazine. And here's the last one that they did. This is what they put oh, out. No. They put this out. Harry Styles takes fashion to another level. Now, here's Harry Styles. Now, I'm not, Can you tell me, is it One Direction? Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, when you think of Country... I think, living. What's the I first thing you come- think of Harry? 100%, 100% Harry Styles. Every time I think of, you know, being on a tractor, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Harry. Look right. at Harry. He's Look got that. Yes. He, he's been That's on many a, tractors. If, I bet you he's got working man hands. He does. Like he's probably got Look them, at that hat. That's a traditional <laughs> That's cowboy a, hat. It is. And those, those boots. boots. That's country. He is wearing country le- uh, leopard print boots. That's an oh. animal that lives in the country. Um, yeah, there he is. And he took fashion to another level. Yeah. Yeah. See now I bet you he's got a flip phone too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, country living, stay on brand. What are you doing now? I hope that you people at home listening to this will, um, will, will get behind my movement here. No. Go. First of all, follow me on Twitter. I don't do a whole lot on Twitter except troll country living <laughs> and post things about my podcast. But if you happen to follow me, you'll see it's just at John Reap, J O N R E E P. You know, I I'm trolling. Right oh, look that, at that blouse that one right there. That is, that is, that that's, you know what oh. that is? That's brave and that's bold. And that's what country living that's is. That's country living at its <laughs> finest. Well, that's a mosquito net he's wearing. <laughs> If I hey, I'm going camping pretty soon. I might wear that blouse. We should have told our last caller that he don't need to spray in just to get that outfit. Yeah, get that outfit. Wear it around Georgia, and there's not a bug gonna attack you within 50 miles. That's right. So anyway, uh, 
Yeah, help me troll <laughs> wow. them for for not staying on brand. I just hate it when that that happens. So. Wow. Yeah, I thought I thought you get a kick of no, that. I like that. You ought to get and crushed and all them. Here's all that. the thing: I'm not knocking Harry Styles. No. I'm not knocking his choice of wardrobe. I'm knocking country living. Yeah, for not being on brand. This is more specific to a VH1 or MTV yeah. or something like that. Okay, so um, uh, what's next? Okay, I can tell you this: um, there is a meme. That is out there. Well, well, I guess it's a meme. I don't know if it counts as a meme. Someone posted, and I've been tagged in this. You've been tagged. Yeah, I've been tagged in a photo that's making its rounds way around the internets. Does this look like John Reed? Yeah, yeah. Pre-beard. Pre-beard. Yeah. There is a tomato that... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's a tomato. It looks like me a little bit, but it looks more like Larry Bird. Now, back in the day, I had a bit... Where before the beard, yeah, I would say I put the pantyhose on my head. It was a long bit, but at the end of the bit, <laughs> I'm, at the end of the bit, I'm wearing pantyhose on my head, and I say, "Is it just me, or do I look like Larry Bird smashed in a screen door?" <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I got kind of a Larry Bird thing. If I didn't have this hair, yeah, like he's, I got kind of a, a my mouth is so small, and it does like slant when I talk, and it makes my nose look bigger than normal. Thank God for beards. You've evaluated this a lot, I can I, tell. I, hey, I've looked at myself a bunch <laughs> in the mirror. Um, but anyway, I guess people remember remember that or know what I look like, and they've shared this picture, and they've tagged me in it. Would you like to see the tomato? Oh, Bam! Oh. Have you oh. seen this, dude? Yeah. That's a tomato. How did that happen? Now, it looks exactly like Larry Bird. Yeah. <laughs> it looks exactly like Larry Bird. <laughs> I mean, if you were to put... I don't know how to do more, Larry. Uh, th- maybe if the nose was a little bigger, and you uh, put like a little blonde wig on that thing, you could. Yeah, that's it. So I just want everybody to know uh, that ain't me, and it's Larry Bird. It's and, Larry Bird, and you're hila- you. and you're hilarious. <laughs> 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 but that's crazy when that happens in nature. Yeah, it's just like it could have been. You know, you've seen the ones with Jesus. You know? Right. Well, you were getting how up come- there, man. You're getting close, Larry Bird. Which I believe is he's right below Jesus. I'm telling you, are there people then, flocking to French Lick right now? Yeah, nobody. French Lick, Indiana, because I mean that's you know he's a great white hope. Yeah, I love <laughs> I love Larry Bird now. Yeah. All right. So I had to share that. Um, real quick, um, country-ish movie night. We're talking about it. It's in the works. We're weighing our options. There's things that Alan and I have talked about where to do it, what movie it is, how to do it, how big will it be. It's in the works. Stay tuned for news on that. Right, Alan? Uh, yeah, correct. Yeah, We're working on it. We're working on it. Now, um, I've been watching this other thing on Netflix, because uh, that's what you do during a pandemic. If you can't tour and you're a comedian, you, you watch everything that exists on Netflix. And do you, you got Netflix. I do. You don't, probably don't watch a lot of TV, do I haven't you? watched TV since we opened back up. Wow, man. You've been slammed. I seriously haven't. I haven't watched anything on TV. Wow. Okay. Well. Um, Unless you recommend it. No, or, it's. Or reach, reach I do recommend it, and I stumble across it, and you'll go through just about every emotion there is if, you ha- if, you're, the, if you're a human being with a heartbeat. Oh. You know. Again, this is country-ish. Yeah. That's my out, ish. Um, Old Yellow Crime, is that what you're talking about? Uh, well, it's called Love on the Spectrum, hmm. and it is okay. a docu series about people who live on the spectrum: autism, okay. Asperger's. They're not like a hundred percent out of the way. They're a little bit like Rain Man, right? Um, and they're trying to find, you know, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife, because they have emotions, they have sure. love in their heart. They just happen to have this disability. And I'm telling you, their families are involved. You get to meet these characters. You fall in love with them. You root for them. Yeah. You see them go on dates, and it doesn't go exactly as they thought. Yeah. So it's every emotion. Did you like the movie Rain Man? Yeah, I love it. Imagine <clears throat> if Rain Man were a real docuseries about his pursuit for finding a girlfriend. Dude, I'm in. I wish I'd make more. This is a good idea. Yeah. So I stumbled across that on Netflix. So if, so if you're at home and you've already watched everything, if you've already watched every episode of Country-ish, 
right? <laughs> yeah. And, and you've Amazon, already watched me on Amazon Prime. On Amazon Prime, Ginger Beard Man for third time straight. Amazon for, Prime. What's it called? Ginger. Ginger Beard, beard man. man. Oh yeah, get on him. Look at Ginger. Him. Ginger Beard Man on Amazon. Not Bread Man. Don't get confused. No, I topped that in one time and got some. Happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. Ginger Beard Man. Anyway, um, all right. Well, uh, should we take a break or do we want to go straight to another segment there, Alan? So you've got a meme me you could do. Yep. You'll if do you want to do meme-me? that. All right. You want to cover that? Yeah, let's do – here's a segment for the people who are just tuning into the podcast for the first time. This is more of a YouTube thing because you're going to want to see this one. Uh, if you go to YouTube.com slash John Reap, that's where I put these out every Friday, full versions. This is a segment. I post a picture. I tell you to make a caption or a meme out of it. Best one wins. What's it called again, Alan? What's the me <laughs> memer? Me me, won't you make a meme out of me? I'll caption this. That's right. That's right. <laughs> caption this, and that's what most people did on this one. Not a lot of memes. And what I'm trying to do, Sebastian, is reward people. For listening to the podcast, number one. And also, I just, I'm so upset with all the social media that I have to do in order to to get the word out of this podcast. So Facebook has basically forced us to create a fan page. So I put this picture of me that's going to be a part of this game on the country-ish podcast fan page. Got you. You know, I've already got the John Reap fan page. I've already got the John Reap personal page. Now they're making me do a country-ish podcast fan page. Anyway, if you are following that or are like that, then you were a part of this contest because you would have gotten the picture. If not, you missed out this time. No worries. We're going to do it again. And I put a picture up and the caption. Okay, let's just uh, – I'll, I'll do the rules first. Okay. So I put a picture up. And I said, here are the rules. Uh, leave a comment, then go like another person's comment, at least one person's comment. That way you have to like someone else other than you. And the person with the most likes wins a country-ish koozie. Nice. That's okay. it. Rules are simple. Simple. So let's see the picture, and we'll talk about it. Okay. Bam! Wow. What do you think of that, buddy? Wow. Can you describe for our listeners what we're looking at? We Sean, were looking at Sebastian. the same couch that was in every living room. Yeah. In front of that couch is a John Reap signature. John Reap, look at him there. Is he painting your? Are you painting your nails? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you have to look at that. And you got Jason over here. He missing a couple teeth. Yeah. And he has hair. People who know Jason now need to check right. that out. And over here on the left or my right. We have a girl. That, yes, 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 yes. My cousin, Holly. Okay. So I'll describe. Yeah, you're right about the couch. I mean, the couch looks like something straight up Starsky and Hutch would have yes. worn. <laughs> it's got that weird old school plaid, the kind of couch when you sit on it, you get carpet burn. Yep. I mean, the texture of the couch yeah. alone. I don't know what's sitting on their piece of paper. I'm sitting Indian style in front of, I'm sorry, uh, cross-legged. <laughs> I gotta be careful these days. In front of and that was an accident, by the way. Yeah. Uh, in front of the couch, and I've got all of us have these weird PJs on. Which, by yes. the way, I love these PJs. Yeah, is that is that baseball players I don't or know. is that like superheroes? I, I think, think it's baseball. Jason it looks like baseball players, right? Yeah. Can you see that? I think it is. Me, I don't know. I can't tell what looks it like is. Pieces of pizza or something. I don't know <laughs> what it probably is. That's probably food. <laughs> and then my cousin Holly is sitting here, and she's got the one piece thing with the footies on it. Oh yeah. Which I was so jealous that yep. that the women's girls' pajamas had the footies built in. Maybe I think about doing a countryish onesie merch. Oh yeah. Well, it'd, be, it'd have that poop shoot in the, yeah. in the back, that little flap. It looked like the old school long johns. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, what if we made something like that, but more, more easy to get in and out of? So it looks like a one piece, but really it's, it's two pieces. possibly a two piece. Velcro? Yeah. Oh, let's work on that. <laughs> All right. So you can see the old school Simon Says right in front of there. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. See that? I, I thought that was a. I thought that was some kind of 
like food looks, dispensary or right or like hungry hungry that. hippos looking Ooh, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a old. I think it's one of the first Simon Says games. Okay. And Holly's sitting on the uh, coffee table. Jason's sitting next to me. He's smiling. He's missing teeth. I've got. I think because I've been thinking about this. What am I eating? Like I've got something in my both hands. I'm holding a container in one, and I've got food in the other. I think it's French fries from McDonald's. I think I'm holding the carton of French wow, fries, and I've got really? one little fry in my hand, or possibly an apple pie. But I think it, it's it French could fries. Be an apple pie. Yeah, yeah. So I I'm, just put, I'm going to go with apple pie because it's does look um, like an apple pie. McDonald's would either be a red or white yeah. Yeah. fry container, but yeah. that's uh, if you're getting fast food, you were rich. We didn't right. Get fast food. Remember when McDonald's first came out and it was almost a luxury to go there. Yeah. Like you, your parents would make, we got food at home. Yeah. Like, but I want McDonald's. Why were they fighting us on it? It was two cents. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why did our parents fight? Because it was bad for you probably. No, I just think they didn't want to spend money. My, my, right. Because they'd already paid for the food at home. We go out every Saturday night, not another day of the week. Right. That's right. it. Right. So I put up this picture and I said, you know, caption this or meme it. And uh, no one made a meme, and I'm thinking it's because the country-ish Facebook page is new. Yeah. So not a whole lot of people saw it, but I'm here to reward those who have liked this page and followed it. So those are the only ones that have played along. And we do have a winner of likes. Okay. Right? So let's scroll through here. We've got uh, two, three, one. So, oh, yeah. So the highest number of likes is seven. Okay. And it's by a guy named Chris Dunn. And he says, I'm Willie. This is my brother, Daryl, and my other brother, Daryl. That is such an old school reference. That is from? Bob Newhart Show. Well, just Newhart. Oh, just yeah. Just Newhart. Newhart. Right. We're get a little particular with there with you, Sean. But, uh, I'm sorry. You're a filmmaker. You know. Well, Alan. I mean, Bob slash Newhart slash Bob Newhart had how many shows? Well, he had like four shows. Right. But yeah, this was the one, that, the popular one, Newhart in the 80s. and This yeah. is where he lived. Late 80s, early 90s? Yeah. Lived up north somewhere. What was yeah, that? What he was had the, like a bed and breakfast up in. Yeah, uh, that's right. Up north. I hated and Larry, show. uh, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl were like the groundskeepers, or right. like uh, worked on this. Stuff. So this, okay. So Chris Dunn, and I'm not here to knock Chris Dunn. He he won. Yeah. Well, he's tied for first, mm -hmm. but we'll go on with that in a minute. But so he got that wrong. It's not even Willie. It's Larry. Yeah. Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl and my other. Why did he say Willie? The Mandela effect, because when we remember it as Larry, but I'm pretty sure Wait. it's changed as Willie. Right, it could be. <laughs> Get conspiracy on the horn. Yeah, I is he know. saying Willie because do one of us look like a Willie, or what do you think the theory behind this is? The Alan Jackson, or I, I'm Sebastian? guessing it's just maybe misremembering. Right, I think yeah. so too. Which is fine. Willie's still kind of a funny name. It's a funny yeah, name. Right, yeah. But it is inaccurate. Yeah. <laughs> these things bother me. These tiny little things. And he, and he got the most likes. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I'm wondering, do I look like a young Willie Nelson? Is is there some Willie reference I'm not getting? I wanted to, maybe I'm not getting something. Maybe. But we all yeah. agree that maybe he just had a Mandela memory and, yeah. and it's actually, he well, just thought Willie. Maybe if Chris wants to clarify, he can do so online, like in the coming yeah. days. Yeah. Well, hopefully. See, here's another thing I'm doing. I'm not announcing the winners of this contest on Facebook. Right. I'm announcing them right here, right now. So if you don't listen, you don't know if you won or not. That's correct. But I will remind them that the winner has been announced. <laughs> Here's a link. Yep. All right. So that one got seven likes. Um, I think there's one more, Alan, that got seven likes, right? Yeah. Hold on. Are we stuck? Let's see here. Um, yep. There we go. Oh, here it is. Jason Reap. The Jason. My own brother uh -huh. left a comment that got seven likes as well. Shirley Temple. That's good. Right. That's what I was trying to think His of. It says Shirley Temple and the two idiots. Yep. <laughs> now, this one I like because I've said idiot in my act many mm -hmm. times. Uh, my cousin Holly looks like a young Shirley Temple there. Yep. In fact, she got called that when she was a kid. Um and he got seven likes. It makes sense to me, but but Jason is disqualified. Because he is a family member. Right. A friend of a family member. That's true. Or works on the show. Yeah. And uh, he probably don't even listen. He don't. He'll never <laughs> even know he won. <laughs> He'll never know. So, Chris Dunn, you are the proud new owner, if you're aware of it, 
of a country-ish cruisy. Cruisy? I cruisy. You should call it cruisy. A cruisy. For the cruise. <gasps> oh, Marketing. Man. Think of that for the cruise. It's going to be a we'll special We'll make our cruisies. own cruisies for the cruise. Please. Call them cruisies for the Reaps Peeps Comedy Cruise Please. coming up in 2021, November 6th through 11th. Go to johnreap.com, click on cruise. All right. Um, Alan, I say we take a quick break and come back with a popsicle update and a Kyle Davis thing, and maybe we'll play a game. What do you think? I think that sounds like a plan. All right, folks. We'll be back with more country-ish after this. Hey, everybody. John Reap here. Just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. We love it when you do that. Also, I want you to go cruising with me. That's right. Not in a car. In a ship. That's right. It's the Reap's Peeps Comedy Cruise. Check it out. If you go to johnreap.com, Click on the Reaps Peeps Cruise. All the information you need is right there. It's in 2021. You got plenty of time. November the 6th through the 11th. We're going to a private beach in Haiti. We're going to Nassau. I'm doing stand-up. We're doing a podcast, and we're doing karaoke. Five nights. It's going to be a a blast. Get on the boat with me, John Reap, and the Reaps Peeps Cruise. If you love this podcast and you love wearing shirts, well, we got something for you. If you go to countryishpodcast.com, click on merchandise, it'll take you to my store, and we have an awesome t shirt for you. It's a country ish podcast t shirt. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Also, it's got the website on there. It's a soft tee, very soft, feels good on your skin. And it helps us keep the lights on here at the at the studio. So check out countryishpodcast.com. Click on merchandise. Get yourself a t-shirt. And know that I love you. All right, we're back. Um, you know, from time to time, I like to give you guys a popsicle update. I like to call my dad Popsicle. And um, I, that's one of the number one, one of the biggest questions I get on Facebook and all that stuff is, how's your dad? Mm-hmm. How's your dad? How's your dad? Well, I've got some great news. Now, as some of you may or may not know, everyone in my family got the COVID. Um, but uh, we are hashtag Ovid the COVID. We feel great. Even my dad got it. And, but we were worried about that. Um, and for a long time, he was at a skilled nursing facility in Burke County which is like 20 minutes from our house. So every time we had to go visit my dad, it was a road trip, and it was kind of a pain in the butt. And we've been trying for a long time to get him back at a facility, which is in our backyard. It is, I mean, probably three football fields from my house. And, I mean, you cut through some yards. Mm -hmm. So now I'm very happy to report that old Popsicle is back at Trinity Ridge, skilled nursing facility and now me and mom will do a walkie talkie and we can walk up there Um, we know people who work there we uh, walk right up to the window which is on the first floor so we can see him and they'll turn the bed so we can talk to him they'll pick up his phone and we'll call it and he can talk to us Um, the first day he got there we walked up there and he didn't look great He was drugged up, I believe, because when they had to move him from the hospital, by the way, because he went from the skilled nursing facility to a hospital where he was dealing with the COVID. And then when they released him, he went back to Burke County. And then somehow we got him over at Trinity Ridge. So whoever helped make that happen, thank you. I'm not even sure who that was, but I appreciate it. So the good news is he's back there. The weird news is when we first saw him, he was laying in bed. We looked at a window. He had that oxygen uh, tube Mm -hmm. right there in the nose. And he was looking. I swear to God, I'm not trying to be funny, but this is kind of funny. This is what he looked like. Looking up at the ceiling, he was like this. (laughs) Just doing that. And we're like banging on the window like, hey, Dad. And we're thinking, oh, man, they got him on some drugs. Because when you have to move him, it hurts. It's painful. Like everything in his muscles hurt. And the COVID kills your muscles. It hurts. So I'm sure they had him on, you know, um, medication. So we were, like, trying to wave to him, and I didn't even think he saw us, and he just kind of did like that. So he was aware of us, and that was good, and um, that was the first day. Then the next day we walked up there, he looked great. 
Um, I guess the drugs have worn off. He's slowly getting better. I didn't see the tube anymore. He was eating breakfast. He waved to us, and they turned the table, the, the bed right to us, and uh, it was great. Um, so, so, yeah, he's doing good. Thank you for mm-hmm. the questions and the comments and the prayers and all that stuff. You know, it's not over um, for him. You know, I think he's still dealing with it, but it's getting better, I do believe. Side note, when I walked up there, um, there were other people at a window next to him visiting someone. And when we walked up, they all had masks on. I was like, Mom, let's put a mask on. Let's be respectful. I put this mask on, okay? And I walked up to the window, and I forget sometimes what I what I'm wearing on my face. <laughs> and it's a somber time yep. because the people next to us, I mean, there's a dang priest. And it like he's reading something from a Bible. It may have been someone's last little thing. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> but I'm in a great mood because now my dad is at this place. So this is a happy moment for us. I think it's a weird, maybe a sad moment. But anyway, I walk up, I've got the mask on and this lady I just did, how you done? You know, how you done? You know, <laughs> forget what I got on. This lady's like this. She goes, <laughs> she makes that move. And I'm like, hello. And she just keeps staring at me. Everyone else kind of kind of looks away. I go, oh, yeah. I go, yeah, it's my, it's my face. <laughs> my face. And she goes, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my face. <laughs> Are you saying that my face is horrible? <laughs> And then she just kind of looked away. So I almost got in a fight with the lady <laughs> who insulted my face at, 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 you know, at a skilled nursing facility when I was trying to see my popsicle. But anyway, I forgive you. It's a weird time. I get it. And it's a weird-looking face. And it takes people a minute to figure out what it is. <laughs> right? But you think it's horrible? I'm stuck with it, lady. <laughs> I can't sure? take it off. <laughs> I can only put it back on. I can cover it up with my own face. Anyway, so thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so let's let's continue. Um, we've got a very special guest that's zooming in. Um, I know you know this guy. He was my best friend living in Los Angeles. We were in the movie Into the Storm together. Um, he was, I think his famous, most, he's done a lot of film, a lot of TV shows, a lot of commercials. You'll know his face. Um, I think his biggest character probably, and he'll agree to this, was uh, on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He played a character called Lil Kev. And Lil Kev was a white rapper that was little special needs when he was not rapping, but when he was rapping, he was hardcore. And he dated D. Anyway, <laughs> one of my best friends. Let's check out this interview with Kyle Davis. Oh! What have you been doing since this whole quarantine, dude? Uh, nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stay at home. Yeah. Although, like, cause I, you know, I, I have horrible insomnia. So, like, the past three or four days, sorry, the dump truck out there, you can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> like the past three or four days, I get these awful cycles where I literally maybe sleep 30, 40 minutes, and that's it. Like, I just toss and turn all night. So then, then I start thinking I have COVID nineteen because my chest starts hurting. You know, when you don't sleep, everything gets very tight. Yeah. I already have asthma, so then all last night I'm laying there going, <sighs> I'm like, oh, I probably have it. But, you know what? Uh, I, I I probably don't. I No, you're right. I didn't even think of that because I don't think of you as an unhealthy person, but, yeah, you've got a lot going on. Um, yeah, that I forgot about. So yeah, you, you could, it could really, it could really mess you up if you get it. So I'm hoping yeah, you, that's why I'm scared. Like when I've been doing these, uh, live feeds for the little Kev thing, uh, this, there's a couple of fans on there. There's one fan. He's a, he's a respiratory therapist. And he was like, man, seriously, don't mess around with this stuff. He's like, I see it every single day. These people come in who have asthma and then that's it. They, they get it and they end up dying. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, don't tell me that. I'm <laughs> get scared. Cause LA, LA has a lot of high cases of it too, but I don't, I don't really, I don't go out or do anything. So I don't know. I just kind of stay in. And uh, so when we, up, when I was living walk. there, you and I would go to restaurants all the time, go to sushi places uh-huh. all the time. We'd go to uh, uh-huh. pizza joints and have like happy uh-huh. hours. Is any of that open at all? No, I mean, it's all open for takeout takeout but uh that's because uh just just like last week they closed 
they started opening up some in dining stuff again mm -hmm. with the capacity, but they closed all that down now. You can eat outside on patios with a six feet distance, but mm -hmm. uh, they're thinking about shutting down LA all over again because it's uh, yeah. people aren't practicing what they're what they're yeah. trying to get done. Yeah, I, I, I know the numbers are going up everywhere too. So, um, what about Jinkies? They got that outdoor seating. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I haven't been to Jinkies. I've driven by there, but I don't – they might be open, honestly. Yeah, I have just, no idea. I'm curious. You know, a lot of these – well, it's funny. Actually, today, you know, Murphy's uh, place, the one up oh, the yeah. bar. So he was supposed to open up several times, but it's hard for them because they're an indoor place because they got arcades and shit. Yeah. So, like, three different times on their Instagram page, they're like, today we're opening. And then the L.A. was like, we're doing another shutdown today. And it was <laughs> oh, like, God man. Damn. And then they're like – then like a month later, like we are finally opening. And then that day, LA did shut down of all restaurants and bars. So he had to close down. So today they're doing an opening uh, finally. And they're doing outdoor seating because right next to them is this Vespa place, but they're not really open. So they're taking up the whole sidewalk. They're going to bring out some arcades. I don't know how that's really going to be social distancing, but uh, we'll oh, see. Well, I didn't even think I forgot all about Murphy. We have a friend. Murphy, mutual friend who uh, has his own restaurant bar. It's called the One Up. It's an arcade, 80s arcade. Like you can go there and drink and eat, and the video games are free. Um, nice. But that's not the arcade. Like you walk up and it's got like 30 games in the same console. Yeah. It's it's fun, but I haven't been there forever either. But uh, I just don't know how they're going to be able to control that aspect though, because so many people touch and joysticks. You got to keep. Oh, yeah. I mean, down. that's I virtually that's impossible. Gonna... Yeah. Yeah. So wow. I don't, I don't know how that's going to happen, but, uh, it sucks, man, because it, I mean, this happened all around the U S obviously, and it's hard for anybody to maintain or, or keep afloat. So is there any restrictions in North Carolina right now with like, uh, restaurants and bars yeah. or no? Well, I think, uh, I don't know. We at phase two again, we're still, still at phase two. We're still yeah. in phase two. Mm -hmm. So phase two is, uh, you're not no bars are open, but if they are open, it's like half capacity or it's outdoor seating. Yeah. Uh, if you're just a bar, it doesn't serve food. You can't be open. So no, no strictly uh, bars. No it's, gyms or movie theaters. No gyms, no movie theaters. Um, people are wearing masks now. I mean, I, I, you see people who don't want to well, wear honestly, them. Honestly, like, well, now, like, because I go and walk my dog at nighttime. And, I mean, really, unless you're going to be close by somebody, you don't need to wear it. But – I still do because you walk by people, but I wear glasses. So my glasses get fogged up all the time. So I kind of put it down around my nose. And then when I see somebody, I'll throw it up really quick. But yeah, yeah, it's a pain, dude. Are you, um, are you able to, I got two questions for you. Yeah. Have you been by my old place and have you tried the, the, the code to get in the garage door? <laughs> God, no, I wanted to maybe, <laughs> uh, I should have done that for 4th of July. So I, but there's no fireworks, so it didn't matter anyway. Yeah, okay. Um, and I could have surprised him, though, in launching fireworks off in his apartment. Yeah, his you're right. I'll bet you that guy's never changed the Well, he's probably changed the code by No, I gave him the code. So, Alan, when I sold my place, mm -hmm. uh, I gave Kyle uh, the access code to my garage door. Yeah. So he could just come in the house whenever I'd tell him to come over. Mm -hmm. And when I sold my house... I gave the guy who bought it the same code, and I, I bet you he didn't change it. Probably not. I don't even know how to change the code. He probably doesn't know how You'd to. You'd have either, to go right? look it up online and figure out how to do it. You know, I didn't give him instru I didn't keep the manual, so I don't know either. <laughs> right. And you um, haven't spoken to him since, right? No, I was in the very beginning, I was keeping it, uh, in touch with him so he could, if he had questions, but then I just stopped doing that. Dude, that would actually be a really fun uh, Zoom podcast to do. That would be really funny, actually. That's a great you should, idea. You should reach out to him and be like, hey, buddy, let's go do a tour of how your house was. And you can throw pictures of how your house used to be and how it's changed. And uh, Kyle, that's know. a genius but idea. And, I'm, and maybe even if I come back, I'll be like, hey, dude, can you rent me a room? <laughs> for, you know, you have to wait until the coronavirus. Yeah, I mean, when it's all said and done, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it would be weird for me to pay to be in my old condo again. You know, <laughs> yeah. 
But he might be down to do a Zoom thing just to see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, no, that would be a good idea. Have him walk around the house and, and see what's changed. Yeah. yeah. It could be like MTV Cribs, except it's John's old Cribs. Right. Busted up. Uh, my other question for you was, uh, what's the industry like right now for actors? I know there's probably can't be as many auditions, but are they doing more stuff for you to tape stuff and send it in? Uh, dude, it's, there's nothing. Yeah. You know, I, so I, I just recently in the past, like two weeks or so, maybe three weeks started getting a couple of commercial auditions Yeah, just to, uh, and, and, uh, I actually, it's easy. Cause I have, besides this stupid backdrop, when I set it all up nice, I have like a nice blue backdrop. Mm -hmm. So it looks professional like you do. And I have the ring lighting and all that stuff. So I've done a couple of those and I, the very first one I did, I got put on a veil for and I thought I was going to book it. And then they booked the other person. And that one was just, uh, they were just going to use my footage from the, from the audition and just put it on something. Now they're doing things where they're like, Hey, uh, if you book this, we're going to shoot it at this location and there'll only be like uh, four crew members yeah. and that's it. Are you willing to do that? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So as long as it's like that. But uh, other than that, theatrical stuff, zero. There's been nothing. Okay. Wow. Everything is, all the studios are closed down because, you know, they have to find a safe way to keep everybody social yeah. distance and it's almost impossible. Right. Yeah. I've been uh, curious because I've got a couple of random ones that get sent to me, like voiceover mostly. Um, right. There was one for, um, for, for True TV that I auditioned for, but it would be like, you know, it was called the interns of the NSA, um, hmm. but that I, I, I didn't do well. <laughs> uh, dude, you'll 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 be excited to hear this one because this happened right. first time ever. First time ever, I got hired for a gig. It was TBS. It was uh, for a voiceover gig. Um, right. I was going to be the announcer of uh, a show called. Um, oh gosh, what do you remember? What it was called Alan? talent something it's a celebrity show. celebrity show off, show off. yeah okay. yeah, it's tbs show it was gonna be great so i got for the first time i got hired i booked the gig and then i right. got fired why i got hired and fired. i've never been fired before I've, I've i've many times i've not gotten the gig that's most of the time right yeah but i've never gotten the gig and then going like no <laughs> that's Oh, so what what was the reasoning? Well, I, well, you know, they never really tell you. They just said they they went another direction. I, I think they just didn't understand what they wanted. And uh, hmm. the lady, you know, because everyone's trying to figure out how to work in this environment now. So right. we, we were doing the voiceover here. There was a young producer, a girl who was probably 25, who was trying to direct me of how to read the lines and... And it was going too fast. You know, it was like going too good. She's like, okay, good, right. moving on. Okay, good, moving on. I'm like, no, this is this can't be right. And then I get, you know, a couple of days go by. And I'm like, they should have been calling me for another episode. Because I was going to do 10 episodes. It was right. going to be a week by week thing. And then, and then I get the phone call from my manager. Yeah, so uh, that gig went away. They're not going to do it. Oh, God. I just don't think they knew what they, they did. It, was, it turns out a, produ uh, 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 a head of the network, it, it got all the way up to the network, and somebody in the network just wanted to go another direction. And I don't even know why I got the job to begin with. I don't think I'm perfect for this job. But I was like, whatever, you want to do it, we'll do it. But Did so they at least pay you for that one episode? Yeah, I, I haven't oh. been paid yet, but there's so much paperwork. Like for that one episode, like it's, okay. uh, I've never filled out so much paperwork for a so small of a paycheck in my life. Why, why was there so much stuff? I have no idea. Just like idea. Com confidentiality stuff? It's, and it, well, some of that, but I, I really don't know. It's a lot of, it was just a lot of paperwork, but um, we play a game on this podcast called uh, how much is that screen actors guild residual yes. check? I know why well, I, I was doing that a, a while back, but I was just saying, Hey, how much did I get? <laughs> but then the other night I was doing it and I was like, Hey, I'm going to steal John's thing. So somebody guessed these things. These, these checkies here. Do you have one and, right uh, now? Uh, yeah, I do. Do you have an unopened one? Yeah. 
You want to do one? Let's play one, Alan. You, sure. Listen, me and Alan will play. Here's how we do it on my show. And, and, and this Let me is, block the old address. But yeah. <clears throat> so there we go. We have a Screen Actors Guild residual check. Kyle Davis is holding it. We don't know what it's from. He hasn't opened it. Kyle, I want you to open it. I want you to read me uh, the production, what it's from. But don't give me the price. Alan and yep. I will make a guess. The closest yep. one wins the game. If we get it exactly right, we get the check. That's right. <laughs> that sounds good. And also, whoever gets it the closest, this is how I was playing with my fans. Whoever gets it's close, whoever gets closest, because it's it's pretty much impossible to nail it right on. Exactly. Then I would send them a free uh, signed little Kev postcard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, either me or yeah. Alan's going home with a signed yeah, postcard. I've there you go. Hey, or listen, a check. Kyle, my wife is a fan of uh, uh, was a fan of your character on Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, so perfect. I definitely uh, I'm going to try to win that postcard for her. So. I. <laughs> John, you better you better lose on purpose. All right. It's all right. Okay, here we go. Here's the check. Kyle is opening the check. It looks to be maybe one. I can't tell. It doesn't look too thick. Yes, it's one page here. Okay, so it is this is it's from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, oh. but the second episode I did called D Gives Birth. Yes. Familiar. <laughs> okay. Where they invite all of her uh, crazy uh, old boyfriends or mm -hmm. people that she banged back. <clears throat> okay. And then what else What else do you want me to read? So it's one episode? Yeah, this is just one episode, one airing. Um, is it free TV, cable, internet? It is basic cable. Mm -hmm. And that's it? That's it, just basic one Basic cable, thing. one episode. Wow. Okay, Alan, That's do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? I, 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 and are I, you guys guessing on total gross or net? We're guessing uh, the, the amount of the check that you're going to cash. Amount, uh, yeah. So that would be net, net, right? Yeah. The net, okay. Yeah. John, why don't you go first? Hey, let, right. me, let me, can I give you, let me give you a hint. And okay. this is never like this. It's a completely even number. Ooh. There's, Ooh. So normally there's like 59 cents or something like that. It's completely just... So dollar, it's just, just a, a dollar amount with no change. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I like this. All right, John. I know that never happens. <clears throat> that never <laughs> happens. Go first, man. All right. I'm going to make a guess. Basic cable, one episode. And this was in 2009 like, or 10. 2009. Was the left years ago. Um, uh, okay. I'm just going to say 100 bucks. Ooh. Really? All right. So, yeah, what are you going to say? I, I'm going a whole lot lower than that. Um, go uh, $18. Yeah, I should have went way lower now that I said that. 18 bucks. All right, so I say 100 Alan said 18 Well, I know John did that on purpose so you could win, Alan, wow. so that's all that good. really nice, John. I appreciate that. Well, and hey, Alan was closest. It's $37. Oh, oh wow. $37. 37 smackaroos. Look at that. Let's see how much taxes they took out, though. The gross was $58.97. So they took out Almost they took out 20 something dollars in taxes. <laughs> wow, Alan, congratulations, buddy. Congratulations, buddy. Yeah. You win a free signed little Kev postcard to your wife. Uh, so uh yeah, make it so up at to the my end wife. of the, at the end of the show, you tell me what you want me to write on it, and I will get that out to you ASAP, buddy. Perfect. That Indeed. is great. Um and John, thanks. I know you just I just opened up this check yesterday. It's uh, and it's it's from into the storm, so I'm sure you are you're getting it soon. Oh, good. But it's a it's a de it's a decent one. It's Ooh. uh, well, don't tell me because maybe we'll play it when I get the check. We'll play it on this game. You think we get the exact same amount? We have to, right? Well, sometimes we don't, only because they throw in different shows with it. Oh, sometimes from, right. from Warner Brothers, but this one is all from into the storm, so it might be the same. It should be the same. Okay. All right. And although. Although the although for you though because you get your you don't get any taxes taken out because you get a you I'm do it at the end of the year. I got to do a cor a corporation thing, so I have. Yeah, so I'm saying, yeah. so for me, I get the taxes taken out straight away. So what I can do is tell you how much I got net amount, and then that won't screw you up because they'll okay. be guessing the same. Alan, amount. you know, what you I'm might saying? have to disqualify yourself if I get this check, or we oh, no, you know what. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe we could, we could rig it so you get it on the. On Actually, the, that would be ideal. That'd it's, be very impressive. I'd really like John. To find you wouldn't out. want you wouldn't want to give away this check. It's pretty good. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't well, well, let me make a guess then. Okay, and 
then you'll make a guess, but I'm only going to tell you the net amount so it won't screw up your thing. Okay, so I'm going to guess the net amount, and okay. you're saying it's pretty good. So that means it's going to so be – So you got to remember there's there would probably be quite a bit of taxes taken out if you're guessing now, the net amount. Now, is this cable, TV, pay it's TV? For, uh, it's pay TV, free TV, electronic sell-through, video, DVD. Let me tell you the amount for video DVD, $3.92. <laughs> All right. But – the rest of them are a lot higher than that. Basic t free TV is usually pretty good. Um, it, pay, TV can be. Is the, pay TV is the highest. Usually. Pay TV is the highest. Okay. Oh, well, I'm just going to go $753. Alan? Um, so is this Price is Right rules where I just don't want to go over? No, I think uh, we just – it's like golf. It's the closest, closest to the yeah, hole. Closest. Yeah, closest. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a good analogy. I'm going to go uh, – you said 7 700 I said 753 753 I'm going to go um, 457 457 Yep. Well, man, we're talking uh, 1325 Oh. So that means I got a lot of taxes taken out. I can't tell you the exact amount because it would give your thing away. Wow. But uh, there was a lot of taxes taken out. When did you like get this check? Yeah. Just uh, yesterday. Okay. Yeah, it takes a little longer to get to North Carolina. Maybe two days ago. Yeah. Time right. So that together. was that was Kyle's net. So I need to memorize that and <laughs> do some tax calculations. Yeah. So I can get the gross amount right for your right. And whoever's well, in let's, here, let's right. see what I claimed on here for taxes. <laughs> I claimed uh, two. Okay, two, all two right. I'll do some number crunching at home. Oh, there you I'll, go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rig this. Because this time. was before I had a kid. Uh, so. yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Wow. What a fun game. So, so I know. Dude, well, and I, I have like, I think I have like 10 more residual checks coming in the mail, like as we speak. But they're all, luckily, because you can tell on SAG after a thing. Mm-hmm. Now I'm ruining it for all the all my fans who watch because I tell them I don't know what it is even though I really do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I got a bunch of those coming in. So I'm gonna do that game is pretty fun though because it takes up a good chunk of time, and you can kind of just sit there and drink and don't have to talk. And well, act Kyle, like I mean Kyle gets a lot of a lot more residual checks than I do. Yeah, He's awesome. got quite quite the resume, um, and he also has been killing it on cameo. So if there's anyone watching this podcast, listening to this podcast, that is a fan of Kyle from It's Always Sunny oh. in Philadelphia or anything. Yeah, I mean, I've out of all the hundreds I've done, I've only done Little Kev because that's what I do on there, the Little Kev character. You can book a, a Kyle cameo, but nobody really wants to see just me. I just <laughs> do the character. Yeah. One time I did a Friday the 13th character, you know, the, yeah. the guy who's all weird, and they wanted me to reenact the uh, – the uh, the mannequin thing where I'm like, hey, Gina, <laughs> I haven't seen you in a long time, baby girl. Remember when you took my virginity? Uh, like that. that was great because I was uh, just recently, I uh, text you, I was watching that movie oh, yeah, yeah. with my girlfriend and her daughter, and we were all watching it together. <laughs> That's like, yeah, I'll do that. That was guy. probably not, not a good scene. It was very creepy. Uh, it was and, funny. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's in her teens, but it's all good. That's, that's one of the good things. I wish, man, I mean, I was only there for like a week shooting it, but that was one of the the movies I wish I could have been like how we, like uh, how we were on into the storm, mm -hmm. how we all, it, cause like if you're on there for like over a month, it's just automatic how much residuals you get. Right. But Friday the 13th, you got to think there's at least two to three Friday the 13th every single year. Right. So they air that movie all the time. And I still get, and I only did a small part in there and I still get decent residual checks. So you got to think, the people who are like the main, main characters, they make bank off that. That's such a genius thing to do is go ahead and make a movie about an a event holiday. that's going to happen yeah. all the time every year for the rest of eternity. <laughs> that's why That's why the Friday the 13th franchise is so big. And, and there's, they do, and then Halloween time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. So, yep. yeah, yep. that is a good one. You know, I got a lot of funny stories about my dad. Yeah. And um, every time I get a comedian or a funny person or an actor, Max Deacon was on the show as well. He he told I, me that he was going to reach out to you. Has he tried that at all? No, Max. God, Max. Never. He lied to me. Right I to love my Max. Face. So. Maximilian. Yeah. Love me. We had a good time on that um, shooting the Into the Storm together. 
You, uh, here, here, okay, it just came to me. One more question, then we'll get to the dad stuff. Okay. Fire you away. told me a crazy story once of something that happened to you when you were shooting a commercial in Mexico. Mexico City. Mexico City, it, which is in also in Mexico. Um, <laughs> right. Well, but you got you to gotta specifically say Mexico City because that's where a lot of the bad shit goes right. down. Actually. Can you give us a little synopsis of what went down and what the commercial was and all that stuff? Yeah, I'll give you a very uh, short, brief rundown of it because I don't want to take a long time. So this was, uh, I actually know the date because I just happened to be looking at a picture from that thing. So it was 2004. This mm -hmm. is right when that movie with Denzel Washington came out called Man on Fire. Okay. So this was a very big, probably one of the biggest Heineken commercials they ever shot. The budget on the thing was like between five and $10 million, some like outrageous number. The DP on it was like the DP at Gladiator. Like it was just a huge thing. And I, I, it was so crazy. I ended up getting it and I'm the main person in the whole thing. It was like a minute and 30 second long spot worldwide spot oh man <laughs> so uh came in uh did the thing and literally the next day because they were sh they, i guess they'd been cast they, they'd seen like thousands of people did the audition they called me the next day like hey can you come to mexico city you don't have the job yet but we want you to come i was like what i was like i'm not doing that that's bullshit i was like i hate flying so unless, unless you guys are paying me a lot of money i'm not doing it so they're like, okay, we'll, we'll give you an extra $2,500 just to fly out here. And I was like, okay, that's good. <laughs> so I fly out there, go and meet with all the producers and stuff again. And uh, then, then they, like an hour later, like, okay, you got the job. I was like, okay, sweet. So then they, we're staying in this like five-star hotel, fantastic. But they even told us when we got there, like, you're not allowed to leave the hotel because, uh, you know, a lot of kidnappings happen. And we were like, <laughs> I want to go see the pyramids and do all this shit. There's so much cool stuff there. So me and this guy, the dancer who, uh, who I get my head digitally altered onto, his name is David St. Elsewhere. Look him up. He's an amazing, he's one of those tectonic dancers where he looks like a robot flash yeah. dance. Okay. So uh, anyway, we, uh, me and him go out and even though we're not supposed to, and we're just checking around and there's like armed guards with AR 15s at all the shops there, which is crazy. And we're like the only white people there. People are looking at us and we're like, we should probably go back because uh, we don't want to get screwed around. <laughs> so a day later, we're going out and uh, we're at the location where we're going to film. And this spot has tons of celebrities from all around the world, like people that are famous in all their their, their little, uh, little countries or little cities. I have no idea who they are, but they're super famous. Mm -hmm. So we're all sitting around talking and uh, we're – no joke. We're literally talking about kidnapping in the movie Man on Fire, and we're joking around about it. No less than 10 minutes later, a PA runs in to the room that we're all sitting around in. She's like, everybody get your shit. Go right now. Go right now. And we're like, what are you talking about? They're like, they're kidnapping people. Everybody. And we're like, shut up. We thought we were a prank was being played on us. Right. Like, everybody get in the fucking van right now. They're taking people. And then we were like, oh, my God, they're dead serious. They start rushing us all to the van, like one of those white long vans that they carry around all the talent in. Our driver has his nine millimeter out and we're fucking, they're, they're rushing us into the van, pushing us all into the thing. And we're like looking out and there's all these like black, like Lincoln town cars with these dudes in like black, like looking tuxedos with fucking AR-15s and they're kidnapping people, throwing them in their car. And our driver just takes off, hauls ass to our hotel because that's like a safe spot. We get there, I'm, I'm, we're, everybody's freaked out. We're all frantic. I'm like, I want to fucking go home. Like, I don't <laughs> fucking die like, for a commercial. This is right. crazy. And so everybody's panicking. And this is like a humongous spot. And they knew that. So the, the government, which is all corrupt, the mob people, they knew this was like a multi-million dollar spot. So they're like, oh, we're going to go ahead and get some money. So everybody they kidnapped was basically like some of the Mexican locals. And then they kidnapped like one American lighting person, I think. And they were demanding ransoms. They would never tell us how much. I'm just trying to wrap the story up. So they so they ended up paying the, paying a ransom. They wouldn't tell us how much. But we had to end up shoot, shoot the whole commercial in the hotel itself. And the only reason we went to Mexico City is to shoot at all the cool locations there. Right, right. So we shot the whole fucking thing in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that we could have shot in Los Angeles right. and the holy didn't even have to do this process. 
but it was crazy. I remember I told my, I called up my agent right away and I was like, I want to go home. I'm done. And they were like, and if they lose me, the whole spot's done. Yeah. So they were like, they're like, Kyle, listen, we want you to stay. We know that you're scared. You can have whatever you want. Cause originally you we were only getting like a little bit of per diem and you had to pay for your, like whatever food you got. And uh, they're like, you can have whatever you want, charge whatever you want to your room. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm in. So that night, cause everybody's freaked out. We partied and I'm not joking. I bought so many bottles of Don Perignon, all the most expensive <laughs> stuff. At the end of the time, when my, when my bill checkout, it was something like $18,000. So oh I got God. whatever I wanted to do, but it was all on them. But, uh, so yeah, so I, I didn't get kidnapped, but it was close and it was very scary. And, oh uh, God. I never want to visit Mexico city again because of those circumstances. That is crazy. nuts. The odds of that. And, uh, thank God you made it out. Okay. We're going to save the dad story for the yeah. next time I have you on. Um, okay. tell everybody where they can get your t-shirts. Well, I'll tell you, and then I'll, I'll send the uh, stuff to Alan because I don't remember the exact link. Go on teespring.com. That's like T, like T-shirt. Teespring.com. And I think the store is called uh, Little Kev's Banana Time Store or something like okay. that. Okay. We'll look it up and we'll put a link down here at the bottom of the video. Cool. And then you can also book me on Cameo. Right. Uh, as, as go and type in Kyle Davis. And also make sure you go and subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel called Little Kevin Friends. And go on uh, Facebook and do Little Kevin Ramus and check it out. We got some good stuff on there. I love you, buddy. I'm glad you're doing great. And, Thanks, uh, man. I miss you so much. We'll do this again because I could talk to your head off, um, yeah. and, and it's been too long. So thank you. I'll let you go, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Love you. Love Peace. you, buddy. Peace. Bicycle. Bicycle. Oh. All right. Love me some Kyle Davis. Miss you, Kyle. Hang in there, buddy. All right, so a uh, couple episodes again. We had a couple episodes ago, we had Jeff Fox were they on, and he was talking about a game that he invented that's kind of like Cards Against Humanity, mm -hmm. but it's clean, and it's for a family. It's for your relatives, and I got it right here. Awesome. Yes, it's called Relative Insanity, and we have it right now. I say we open it up. And we play the game. Alan, do you have the rules back there? How do we play this game? Yeah, so I do have the rules. You guys want, you want me to talk you through how we're going to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Because you guys are going to play against each other, okay? Okay. All right. So all we right. got all these yellow cards right here on the table. So listen, I, I'm here as a judge. My son, Nick, is here also helping us out on the recording. He's going to also help judge the, the, the winner of this game. Okay, the, good. The rounds we play, okay? So you and Nick are judges against That's uh, right. me and We're going to collaborate to We're decide. We're playing against each other. Okay. We're going to collaborate to decide who has the best answer on this. So what's going to happen is I'm going to read out a setup mm -hmm. from these cards I've got. Okay. You guys uh, draw seven cards, each of you, seven. from that yellow pack right now. Okay. All right. These are the punch lines. You want to shuffle? And you guys are going to read those punch lines and decide which one you want to play on the setup I'm going to read out. All right. And okay. we have to decide who played the better the better uh, punchline. So who's the most creative? What makes sense or creative or yeah. what made them laugh? It's very arbitrary. It's just got to make us laugh, okay? Right. We've got to make you laugh. Right. What's going to be the funniest? That makes sense. It Relative just has to be insanity. Something that makes us laugh. There's a lot of cards. I'm just going to. Okay. Dude, I'm going to put my readers on. Look at this. Oh, tell me about these readers you got here <laughs> since you're matching me now. Uh, Yeah, dude. Oh, also, rest in peace, Wilford Brimley. He passed away. Did he? I look like him a little bit yeah. with these glasses on. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I went to the eye doctor. One, one, two, two. Hang on. Three, three, four. Have a hard time four. counting. <laughs> <Same time. laughs> Liam, Liam. All right. So I went to the eye doctor, and I, I'm just – I can't see tiny, like, up close, um, tiny print. So I got these – for situations like this. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yours, you wear yours all the time? I feel like I've been wearing them a lot lately. See, this is perfect. I haven't been to the eye doctor. Down here, but up here, I would never. That yeah. hurts to look. Okay, let's play. Alan, you've got the setup to a joke. We've got seven punchlines each in our hands. Is this fair since you're a professional? Uh, look, I didn't write them. Should I get like a spotted two points? Yeah, I'll no, give you I'm two just, points. I'm just kidding. I'm well, it's just one I'll point. I think you got this, dude. I got it. 
Alan, you want to read us the setup, and we will read some punch. Uh, well, you, yep. I'll let you. Uh, should I pick first? Who cares? I'll pick first, and then you pick. Well, no, we're going to read them at the same time. You guys time. pick it, pick yeah. it, and I'll I'll have you guys read out your answers yeah. one at a like time. I'm picking my yeah, one. Yeah. You got to pick them. Yeah, I'm going to read. Do we have to pick before we hear the punchline? No, no, no. I mean the setup. You hear the setup. We hear the setup. Pick yeah. it. Then we choose a card. Drop. Put that card down on the ground. That's the one you're locked in on. And then I'll have you guys read them. All right. Okay. Is that good. I'm ready. All right. So here's the first setup from the Deaf Fox Worthy game. When I asked my grandpa for words of wisdom, the first thing he said was, <laughs> okay. <laughs> "Okay, all right." Okay. So you guys pick uh, what you think, what you want to play as the okay. best punchline to that. When I asked my grandpa for words of wisdom, the first thing he said was, <laughs> okay. Okay. You guys good? Uh, I'm locked. Yeah, I'm locked in. Now, put your other seven card, six cards right here because. Yeah, we'll have to get one to replace. No, what I want to do is I want to judge you to see if I think you picked the funniest punchline. Oh, you twist. the six that you didn't pick. Yeah. And you can do that to me as well. Oh, okay. okay. So that's your card you're choosing? That's my card. All right. All right, so. I'll read mine first. John, read yours first. Yours first. It doesn't matter. All right, I'll read mine first. Give us a setup yeah, one more time. Set setup one more setup time. was, when I asked my grandpa for words of wisdom, the first thing he said was, how about giving me a sponge bath? <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not bad. All right. All right. Now, remember, I chose that one out of these other ones. I'll let you see. Okay. What, okay. okay. That's good. Sebastian, what about you? What do you got? And the setup again was what? When I asked my grandpa for words of wisdom, the first thing he said was, I quit. I quit caring years ago. I quit what? caring years caring. ago. Caring. I quit caring, caring years, years ago. ago. Hmm. John, you're up to me. Again. I was thinking about his appearance with the, you know, the, the black socks and all that. And John, yours was again. Could you read yours oh, again one more my time? My punchline was, "How about giving me a sponge bath?" Yeah. All right. So I'm going to confer with my son here. What do we think? What do we think is the best one? Yeah, I gotta agree. I, mean, I think we're unanimous here. It's gonna be hard to beat this bath, punchline on any sponge setup. bath. Got the one. So John's got one point there. I got one point. The, the only good thing, the only thing is, oh, I wait. could have been holding one back. But if we continue playing, I say we don't we don't pick new cards. We just use the rest. Yeah, just use the yeah. ones you got. Oh, okay. okay, so I'll these give are, you another setup. Yeah. Okay, so oh. these are discards, but I'm going to remember this. Okay. Wait, I'll just put mine over here. That's yours. This is mine. Okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Alan. All right. Here's another setup. I'm winning. One to nothing. One, One to nothing. nothing. John's on the board. While changing my nephew's diaper, my sister said. <laughs> While changing okay. my nephew's diaper, my sister said. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. Now, see, this is crazy because I want to go back when we're done and feel and, and, and go like, well, you should use this one for here. But you don't know what the next exactly. setup is going to be. You and you think, may have already used that. And funny you may one. hold on one that it's really good, but yeah. it may not have a good setup. Okay. <clears throat> Dang it. Dang it. Oh, I went first last time. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to ask Sebastian to go first this time. When While changing my nephew's diaper, my sister said. Well, he's not locked one in, Al. I know what he's oh, doing. Oh, no. Let's, oh, let's, right, right, yeah, right, John, right. you got you to get locked in. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> he thinks it's. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> now I'm choosing because it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Alan. All right, Sebastian, what's your answer? When, while changing my nephew's diaper, my sister said. What's the deal with his stomach? Mm. Ugh. That's actually mm. kind of disturbing. But probably uh, right. not. You probably got some. Hey, while changing my nephew's diaper, my sister said, "John, I'm a very good kisser." <laughs> That's country-ish. Come on, you That's can't keep it zipped. To keep it in the family. <laughs> That's, that's why I chose it. West Virginia, dude. That's, this is more like Cards of Humanity when you put that I sick know. twist on this it like This was that. supposed to be. Yeah. It's supposed to be All right. a family game. Can you guys it read, is. read your answers one more time for us? I said, I am a very good kisser. And he <laughs> to the said, baby. Right. Well, the sister said it. The sister said it. While the baby. baby was getting changed. <laughs> These aren't my words. This is Jeff Fox where he wrote And this. I just said, what's the deal with his stomach? All right. Listen. It's not that it's the funniest, but it's the only one that kind of somehow works. Is I'm going to go with Sebastian oh, with okay. the stomach. Okay, all right, all right. that's fine. Again, I think it's a little creepy, but uh, <laughs> right. you know, I'm going to take now it. Now we'll see later if I should have waited to use that yeah. on something else. Yeah. Okay, 
We want right. to do one more, so sure. best out of three. Right. See what we got. There we go. This will be a tiebreaker. Oh, okay. Top okay, so you guys are 1-1 one, one right now. Okay. Tied up. All right. So here we go. Here's the third and final setup. <laughs> Damn it. I just thought I should have used it. Okay, yeah. go ahead. You ready? <laughs> we were shocked when mother got a tattoo and more shocked that it said blank. We were shocked when my mother got a <sighs> tattoo and even more shocked that it said blank. God. I guess I go first this time. Um, well, once you guys get locked in, tell me when you're both locked in. And now, wait, this grandma talking? We were shocked when mother got a tattoo. Mother. And even more shocked that it said. All right, I'm locked in. Locked in. Yeah. You guys are both locked in? Yeah, I feel locked. like you're going to win. I don't know. I should have hung on to one of this. Okay. All right, John, you go first this time. It's still funny. Okay. Maybe all of them are funny. Yeah. We Some were shocked when Mother others. got a tattoo and even more shocked that it said... My fantasy life is cray-cray. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually that's pretty good. good. So all right, that's good. It. You got to deliver you got it. You got no. I know you do. You got to wear with it. Okay. All right, Sebastian, while you were shocked when Mother got a tattoo and more shocked that it said... In my fantasy, I'm wearing a camouflage thong. <laughs> Okay. I don't know if I like the punchline better than the way you delivered it. <laughs> I don't know what my favorite. Because I'm like, it kept. Yeah, I had to hesitate. It... I'm wearing a camouflage. A thong. I thought That's it was the way a long said, tattoo. I know. It's like, right. All right. There's a lot of periods in it. John, there. could you repeat your answer for us again? <laughs> Come on. You like that? Yeah. A lot of periods in it? A lot of periods. <laughs> what, 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 what did you say, Al? Can you repeat your answer one more time for me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We were shocked when mother got a tattoo and more shocked that it said, My fantasy life is cray cray. <laughs> <laughs> that's, good yeah, that's, that's good. That would be a tattoo thing. Okay. Uh, Sebastian, oh. what about you? We were shocked when mother got a tattoo and more shocked that it said, In my fantasy, I'm wearing a camouflage thong. Mm. Okay. So, Nick, we got to try to sway anybody. I'm just going to look down and let the judges confirm. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, uh, you know what? But I got to give Sebastian points on delivery. I think uh, I, you know, I think that's something. To you gonna give that. him points for that? <laughs> I'm gonna take him away. I, no, like, listen. Okay, okay John's judges. answer I think was the best answer, but Sebastian, you got a point for your delivery too. So, <laughs> I'm calling it a draw. I think it's. Oh I, no! I think you guys, no, yeah, I think you guys are a draw. The first, the first competition, the first Jeff Wa Jeff Foxworthy. All right, we'll, do we want to do one last let's one? Pick a, let's get a winner. We got to get a break. Oh, so it's, it's, it's still, it's still a great split. After it's still a split. The whole out. It's still tied. See that you spent too quick. Uh, <laughs> That's what I thought I did. Remember, okay. <laughs> delivery's part of this. Here uh, we go. Last one. Okay. When Aunt Bertha asked me how do I look, all I could say was, Oh God. <laughs> When Aunt Bertha asked me, how do I look? All oh, I could God. say was blank. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, see, here's there's different philosophies on how to play this game, <laughs> yeah. right? There's one philosophy that's like, well, I want the punchline to make sense. Yes. Then there's a pun there's then the, sometimes it's like, well, I want to have a crazy thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your philosophy. But I think all, it all really, at the end of the day, it's how what you the judges. elicit the laughter. I think right. for this, yeah. Okay, all right. So I'm stuck between two that I have here. Three. Me too. I mean, there's. I'm stuck between two. I mean, I got all of these will work for this punchline, this setup. I mean, um, when Aunt Bertha asked me, "How do I look?" All I could say was, "I'm gonna choose this one." All right. So I went first this third time. This could, is Sebastian. Are you Elmer, locked? Are you locked in, Sebastian? Uh, if I could do an Elmer Fudd voice, I would kill you on this one. But I'm gonna go a different route. All right. Ooh. So that's so what you're locked this into. This is what I'm locked into. I don't know about this. All right. One. So uh, John, you went first last time. So Sebastian, you're up. <clears throat> when Aunt Bertha asked me how do I look, all I could say was, "Where's tornado when you need one." <laughs> Where's a tornado when you need Where's one? Where's a tornado when you need one? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, John. He Aunt feels Bertha, good now. He feels good. <laughs> when that Bertha asked I me, how I do I look? Worse. All I could say was. I know that you're proud, but really you should be embarrassed. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's it. 
Yeah. So, right, right, Nick. Are we? Are we? That's the words. That? It says, "Look, I know." See, it fits for the thing. Yes, it does. <clears throat> but here's what also would have worked. Yeah. I love it when we don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> this also would have worked. Let's pretend this never happened. <laughs> or. He has a big old head and little beady eyes. That's one better. All I like these, that one. I like that one better. All of these would have worked. But I had. The only reason I didn't put, put, use that one because it says he's. Yeah. And yeah. we're talking about a female. Yeah. Right. So I think I, think I had about one these that things. said, I'm concerned. Very, <laughs> very, very concerned. Oh, oh yeah. You could have pulled off the Elmer Fudd on that Fudd one. There. So. Right, <laughs> right. Wow. Well, that's okay. fun. Okay, good. Well, John, you win with uh, three points on the board Yay! against Sebastian's two points. All right. Thank That's you, awesome. Jeff Foxworthy, for That's such a fun, fun uh, crazy game. It's called Relative Insanity. Maybe we'll play it again. Maybe, uh, you know, we've been meaning to get, like, the whole group back in here yeah. for a fun, like, uh, like a reunion sort yeah. of thing where we're all, like, maybe it's a happy hour type thing. Ooh, like, instead of having one beverage, we have a bunch. Yeah. And then we go live and see what yes. happens. Ooh. That's <laughs> I know. That makes you nervous, <laughs> don't it? Um, but that's something to do possibly next time in the future. Sadly, sadly, we, we're pretty much out of time on this one. Right, right the Alan Jackson? Yeah. Yeah, we've been going a long time here. It's, uh, I mean, it's flown by. I've had a great time. We did not get to small town news this episode, but I know that we will in a future episode. Um, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to um, – you can write an Apple Tunes – Apple Tunes <laughs> – Apple Podcast Review, iTunes. Um, go to johnreap.com for merchandise. There you go. Click on the shop. You can get hats, masks, T-shirts – koozies digital downloads i mean there's even old school stuff on there belt buckle there's bumper stickers you name it it's at johnreap.com johnreap.com slash uh shop don't you love it when that little thing pops up yep. and you're trying to scroll yep yeah um also you can check out ginger beard man on amazon prime i'm still doing cameos if you want me to say something for somebody's birthday or anniversary or whatever holidays coming up you write it I say it, still doing TikTok, even though it's about to get banned. <laughs> Ginger Payne still on YouTube. And I think that's all I got to say about that. You got anything to plug? No plugs. No for plugs for the Alan Jackson and Nick and Sebastian. I'm John Reap. Bicycle. Oh, man, I think I went too far. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Life on the farm is kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't shoot a back and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and your self parked cars. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for Country Ish. I'd make a new show every day if I could, but my friends have jobs and they pay pretty good. Record when we can, work when we should. It's time for Country Ish. Well, I don't care what your skin looks like Just love everybody and we'll be alright Listen to the show every Friday night It's time for country -ish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle It ain't number one, it's right in the middle My town's not big, but it ain't too little It's time for country -ish. Don't you Share